and welcome to the One More Thing podcast. Today I'm joined with Dr. Troy Doucet. How you doing, man? Everything's good, man. Thanks. Well, it was an excellent first weekend of real Asianships. <laughs> yeah, yeah. we just debated so long on this like whole concept of this name like is it gonna make sense yeah. and i think people got it yeah. um but it was a it was laborious to say the least that's right trying to get the the logo to be just right and make sense and we sent it to a bunch of people like can you read this yeah this makes sense <laughs> um but you know it was an exciting weekend uh this weekend not only the start of the series but we had open house which mm. was fantastic um, we had so many people, uh, new people that came to the church, and yep. um, we we're really trying to create a culture of invitation, and yep. you're really the model for that. I, I really think that you're responsible to like for like 50 to 100 new people at Suncoast because you're just constantly inviting yep. uh, people, and um, we, we appreciate that about yeah, you. Yeah, man. Thanks. Uh, so that's, that's a, a thing that we'd like to continue on. Uh, with our church and our community, because we think we have something that's really special and really healing for a lot of people. Yeah. And uh, Suncoast is a special place, and we want more people to know about it. That's so, right on, man. Um, but yeah, so relationships. This is your this is your baby. This yeah, is your sermon series. You're going to be speaking the whole time. That's it. Um, what was your inspiration for doing something like this? I you know I'd spoken with Dr. Bacham about the 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 origin of it was maybe doing a class on relationship relationship building and really focusing on marriages and strengthening and building marriages in the community because I know there's just a lot of people in our church where like marriage is tough man and you know I think we have in our theological principles that we teach I think there's some things that go un unsaid quite often and I think one of them is like relationships and so Larry had challenged me, he said, well, think about a series, maybe not a class, but where can we have the most effectiveness and reach? And so that's when I pitched the real relationship series and, and focusing on, you know, how do relationships get strengthened? And it begins with ourself and it moves outward. Whereas, you know, most, most churches that have that evangelical sort of penchant, is yourself is the last yeah. piece, the last piece of it. You know, right. you need to deny yourself. And, you know, I talked a lot about that on Sunday. And so that was really the whole impetus of it was really it started out as how do we strengthen our families, give them tools, resources to, to build. And it turned into let's let's just do a series and, and try to just rock it out and, yeah. and, and, and do what we can. So. No, I mean, I love that you started with self-love. Um you know, it can feel a little narcissistic or it can feel a little like this is wrong. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's <laughs> it's like the old adage when you're on an airplane, you know, put your oxygen mask on first so that way you can help other people. And yeah. it's the same thing with this kind of uh, situation when it comes to relationships. Like you have to be healthy. You have to love yourself before you can love others. And, you know, it's just when I you know, if my daughter says something negative about herself, she's hating on herself. Like I'm so ugly or I hate my glasses or I don't like my smile. Like it breaks mm -hmm. my heart, yeah, you know? And, yeah. and I, I truly believe, you know, God is our father. You know, we, he looks at us as like our kid, like his kids and oh, yeah. we break his heart every time we're terrible to ourselves. And whether that's on the outs, like on the outside, outwardly saying things or doing things physically that are bad for ourselves, but also on the inside, what yeah. we're saying to ourselves, our self talk is, it can really damage your your psyche. Yeah. And um, I know you had some uh, some kickback on some of the the content. Yeah. Uh, so, that was said. Yeah. Some of the theology of it is you know quite controversial if you're cut from a particular cloth of of religious faith. You know, and it, I we're going to disagree to disagree. You know, I think uh, first and foremost, whatever you view scripture as, uh, whether you think it's you know, ineffable, you know, inerrant, whatever, infallible, then it's pretty clear even in that context, which I don't agree with, that God is love. Like God is not an expression of love. God is not an essence of love. Mm -hmm. God is the absoluteness of love. Mm -hmm. And it's out from that in which we see all of, you know, the cosmos as it is, mm -hmm. you know, and that's why I love the song we sing, you know, um, a million times or a billion times. Yeah, so will I. Yeah, so will I. Yeah. Like the whole idea is like what we see is a canvas that expresses the absolute nature of God as love. 
And there, therefore, things that get appropriated onto God, things like wrath, mm-hmm. judgment, mm-hmm. justice. Um, those Which be- is, I mean, it all stems from the Bible. I Yo. mean, you read the God of the Old Testament. Oh, and, absolutely. Man, he's terrible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Genocidal. Like, yeah. I mean, literally, the most one of the most famous biblical stories is God destroying all life on on planet Earth, yeah, but, uh, except for a guy on a boat with some animals. Yeah, but you know who else was genocidal back then? People, you right, know? So right. the, the, God became a, a definite reflection or even projection of that culture of the right. time. So you, you, you have to take it with that, you know, sort of consideration, man, where things, for me, you know, Jesus sort of erupts this new idea of a kingdom of God that is not out there, but in here. And the true nature of God's love is to bring out what is already there. And, you know, this is where I got challenged. Like, you know, person was like, no, humans are born bad. Like, we're born, you know, we have a sin nature and so forth and so on. Which and is the original sin, you yeah, know, doctrine, ideology. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, ideology. it's fourth century, man. Right. That, that's, that's when it begins, fourth century. It doesn't begin with Adam and Eve. God creates and says it's good. And I believe it. I believe it. Um... But just like hate has to be taught, you know, kids aren't born racist, dude. Mm-hmm. They're taught racism. I think that's just part of human nature. We also have to be taught to love and to come to understand what that love is. You have to come to understand your true self, your true identity is that love which created you. And I use the story of Aslan's drawing on my my refrigerator to kind of portray that it was very it was like a throwaway little story but it i think it's a reflection like someone says man that painting's kind of why do you keep it on your fridge because of who made it right as as ugly as you think it is or as what abstract or whatever my treatment of that is a reflection of the creator of it and right. so you know i still have that picture today in a folder mm-hmm. And so even the kickback is is not justified when you start, you know, for every verse that you're going to tell me that mm-hmm. you know, we're not good and God is a God of wrath and judgment, mm-hmm. I have a, a verse that contradicts that as well. Right. And I think the essence of this teaching was true self-love is not vain. It's not narcissistic. It is grounded in, an, in a, a recognition of my identity that I want to see myself not as others see me or not as I try to portray myself on different, you know, platforms of social media, but how do I come to view myself as God sees me Mm -hmm. and a child of his or hers or whatever, whatever God is, you know? So that was the essence of of that, that whole lesson, man. Yeah. No, I, and I, I loved every bit of it. I mean, he did a phenomenal job. It was like two and a half sermons packed into one. Yeah. There was so much to unpack you when can... I was prepping for this podcast because it was there was so much content, and it was deeply philosophical and deeply theological, uh, theological yeah. that there was a lot to go through. Um, one of the, the things I wanted to kind of along the veins of the cognitive dissonance. Yeah. Um, you know, you there's this recognition of... I have an ability to do terrible, terrible things. Mm -hmm. And there are things that we make mistakes. I don't always live up to be the best father I could be or the best husband that I could be. I've made mistakes. Mm -hmm. Uh, But separating ourselves from the mistakes and not necessarily encapsulating all of... My identity is not made up of all of the things that I've done bad. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So, yeah, um, there's this great song Tenth Avenue North uh, sings. It's called uh, "You Are More." You are more than the choices that you've made. Yeah. You are more than the the sum of your past mistakes. You know, and there is this recognition of yes, you have to recognize that I am capable of doing terrible, terrible things. Mm-hmm. There, you can't just say like, "Oh, I I could never do that." That's right. You know That's what right. I'm saying? Yeah. I, I I can't remember who talks about the shadow stuff. Uh, self, yeah, young Carl Young, yeah. yeah. And um, there is this recognition of like I have a proclivity and ability to be a Nazi German prison camp guard That's right. and pressing that button for the gas chamber. That's I right. have the ability to be that That's person. Right. So recognizing that, but living past and living up to a better way. Yeah. And rejecting that. 
So yeah. you can identify like, yes, I am capable of doing these things, but it's not who I am and who I want to be. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, when you're encapsulated into this idea of original sin, that no matter what I do, That's no matter right. how That's right. <laughs> many good choices and I live up to what I believe God wants me to be, I'm still a dirty, rotten sinner. That's right. You know, and there's that old like theology that I learned growing up, and I'm sure you did too, growing up in the church, like you are covered in Christ's blood. And the only way that <laughs> God right. can look at you is because you are covered in in his blood. Yeah. And it's and it's it's there's a lot of PTSD there. That's you know, it, there's absolutely. a lot of bad yeah, theology yeah. that comes into play when you're talking about that. Yeah. You know, so it is a freeing message that you gave this weekend that like, yeah. you Thanks, know, man. love yourself because God loves you. Yeah. He doesn't look at those mistakes or the things at times when you miss the mark. You know, that definition of sin is yeah. missing the mark. It's not taking a sip of alcohol. You know, yeah. it's it's literally just missing the mark of love. Yeah, yeah. And um, I love that you you gave that um, the you, the scripture you used this weekend was you know what is the greatest commandment? That's love right. God and love others. You know, and and that's perfectly encapsulated in, yeah. into the extreme scenario of Christ on the cross saying, Father, forgive them. That's right. You know what I'm That's saying? Right. You know, like they we, don't know what they're doing. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and so yeah. it's like that is such an, an inspirational and aspirational idea, an ideal of love. Yeah. And forgiveness. Yeah. Um, and it's humbling. It's humbling to think about. Can you imagine like the the people, the very people that are destroying you? They're whipping you. They're nailing yeah. you to a cross. They're laughing at you yeah. and they hate you. And That's you're it. still asking for forgiveness. That's right. And I think that having that ideal is is really, really important. Yeah. Oh, dude, that's a that's a beautiful way to put it. Cause I mean, that's how I view, you know, the execution and, and the murder of, of Jesus is it's not some historical moment which, you know, capitulates God's salvific, you know, method for, for, for humanity. It's, it's a moment where we look at, I, I like what Nietzsche says about it. Nietzsche says there was only one Christian and he died on the cross. And what he means by that is Jesus had this very innate ability and connection, obviously with the divine to not, to, to what I believe he's really saying is not that they don't know what they're doing. Obviously they know what they're doing. They're killing a, a man who was, you know, accused of a crime. I think the true sort of interpretation would be they don't know who they are and they obviously don't know who I am. And it's when I have the ability to love myself and see God in me that I can begin to see God in others. And it changes my whole perspective, right? It changes how I view. I don't have to like who you are or love who you are or what you stand for, but I do have to appreciate whose you are because what Richard Rohr says is, all things belong to God. All things belong to God. Even the person I despise belongs to God. And, you know, it's, 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 it's tough. And that's why it's a journey, man. It's never transactional. It's always transformational. Right. The more I do it, the more I become it. Yeah. Not the more I believe it. The more I do it, mm -hmm. the more I become it. And that's, that's what I hope the takeaway is. The more I learn to love myself, the better I get at it. And I lose the culturistic ideas of vanity, narcissism, and I get into the divinity of it. Like mm -hmm. I begin to see the divine not as me, because I'm not, but in me, because that is the dwelling place of, of God. Yeah. yeah no, I mean, it's amazing. I, I actually wrote down that line. It's, a, it's nice to believe things. Just don't ask me to live them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And it's it, it, it's true yeah. because the message that you're saying is much different um, than uh, growing up. Yeah. Like growing up, it was like all I had to do was just say the special prayer and then I'm good. Yeah. Um, do it now. It might be your, your only time. Right. But, um, you know, we talked about it this morning, you know, this uh, the difference between the Roman Roman view of salvation and the Celtic view of salvation. Yeah. And um, for the most part, Roman view has been pretty much taken over by fundamentalism oh, like yeah. you know you you go in there with force and you and you say like you need to say this prayer yeah and um you need to believe these things and then you're good and if you don't you're gonna die 
yeah. um, much more forceful, you yeah. know, in the Celtic Confront, confrontation. Yeah. You know, in, in, in the Celtic view is much more like, come live with us, come experience what life is like within this set of beliefs and ideals yeah. and you will be transformed. That's right. And, uh, what was the verse that you, you had said, um, uh, you will, you will know him by his kindness or. Oh yeah. Uh, so the Romans, Romans 10, where, you know, I got into a conversation with someone after church and she was sort of bent on this idea of repentance and we need to be, we need to repent of our sins and because God is a God of wrath and judgment and, and he hates sin or whatever. And I said, sure. I said, but what, those are all nice sort of supplementary auxiliary aspects of God that I don't fully understand. But what leads people to repentance? Romans 10. And she stopped in her mm -hmm. tracks and she knew, yeah. you know, I was like, I know the Bible too. And she goes, it's God's kindness. God's kindness leads to repentance. And I said, what did I just preach? Yeah. Wrath, judgment, hell, fire, brimstone. Or did I preach that which leads people to transformational life? Mm -hmm. And that was the end of that conversation. Yeah. And so, you know, it's, it's, you know, like Dr. Bauckham says, we just have to be kind mm -hmm. because sometimes they're blind. Mm -hmm. And Nietzsche says it the best too, is that people want to hold on to a lot of untruth because it's all they know. Yeah. And, you know, you, you talk about this idea of the blood of Jesus covering me, like what a horrible image. Like if, if, if God is love and God is all powerful, then he's going to love me no matter what. Mm -hmm. And we may think we can reject God, but it's the same thing as I think helping homeless people is good. Just don't ask me to do it. I can think I'm rejecting God, but he's not rejecting me. And who's the one who has the supremacy of power? Right. And God's going to save who God wants to save. And guess what? I'm going to say it this weekend, so not to give too much away, because this weekend's all about how do I love God? And the, the true essence of loving God begins with loving myself. But I truly begin to love God when I love what God loves. Mm -hmm. No, that's beautifully and said. And that's yeah. that's hard, bro. Yeah, it is. And guess what like guess what God loves? Everything. Not just everyone. It's easy easy to appropriate that just to humankind, but like God loves animals. God loves his creation. And so should I. So yeah, yeah man. No, I'm excited for this weekend and it's and gonna I, rock, dude. And I you know, I appreciate that about our community that, that people have the comfortability to come up to you and disagree. Yeah. And but you still sure. handle it with with love and grace and yep. just showing them a different way. And I think that that's the Celtic view. Come into our community and see the difference, see the love in, in this community. And no matter what you believe, I mean, we have Catholics, we have Charismatics, we have Baptists, we have everybody in between, right. you know, right. and, but it's a beautiful thing to see this community come together with the singular focus of love. And we don't demand that you believe all the same things we believe. No, That's, that's just not a requirement no. to be a part of our community. And I think that's really special and unique in this space. Um, so I'm, I'm excited, man. I'm excited to continue on with this series. I yeah. think it's going to be an amazing series. So, Thanks, dude. Uh, you have anything else for one more thing? No, no, man. I'm just, I'm excited. I'm, I'm pumped. Um, like you said at the beginning, just keep inviting people. Yeah. Because that's the best way. And that's where, again, we're not being confrontational. We're just saying, come and dwell with us. Yeah. And, and take away from it and leave yeah. encouraged. So Well, and also, if you have a hard time getting people to come to church, we have uh, Hawkins Road Festival this weekend. Yes. Uh, there's going to be live music, um, different vendors from local vendors. We have bounce houses for the kids. I think there's like 15 or 20 but different bounce houses. Yeah. And 11 to 4, man. Yep. Food trucks, beer and wine tent. You know, it's going to be a great day. And, and that may be a great thing to invite your neighbor to that's hesitant to come to church. So. That's right on. All right. Can't well, wait. Thanks, man. Appreciate you. Yep.